Hello friends, it's Terry with Terry's Mailbox and today I'm going to show you this inspirational vignette box with the Brushstroke Flower Minis. I love inspirational quotes, so here I, I use the uh, the Emporium, Alphanumeric Emporium to create the letters for this Create Your Life vignette box. So the first thing I did is I ink smooshed a whole bunch of watercolor pieces. Um, I wanted to use a variety of colors, so again I'm just going to show you here how I did the yellow. I put it in my messy box and spritzed and sprayed and, and dropped and dabbed and dried and until I had a whole assortment of colors to use for those brushstroke flower minis. So again, here's the assortment of colors. There's the yellow. Uh, this is Kitsch Flamingo. Um, I used, uh, there's Picked Raspberry. I used Savage Patina, the Wilted Violet. Again, I was trying to just really get a whole assortment of colors. So the next thing I did is I pulled the vignette box and I'm measuring it here. And then I'm gonna be working on a piece of Tim Holtz Distress watercolor paper. So love this stuff. It's bright white, it's great to work with. So I've measured, I've pulled out my tonic trimmer. So now I'm just kinda of trimming little, little tiny strips off at a time until I get it to the point where it fits just inside of the box. So I don't want it to buckle after I have completed my, my vignette. So again, just kinda of working here doing a little bit of trimming at a time. And once I'm happy with it, I went ahead and ink smooshed it. So, you know, I use bundle sage, antique linen. These are kind of my go-to colors for uh, green type background. So again, I'm just uh, drawing and adding more water, you know, just kind of dipping and drying until I'm happy with the, with the background. So there it is in the box. You can kind of see that's that's my start. So the next thing I did is I grabbed the floral outline number 430 stamp from Stampers Anonymous. I think this is this is one of my favorite floral um, stamps. And you can see here I'm using Distress Watercolor, um, the new uh, Distress Watercolor, and um, and I'm going ahead and just kind of inking it up here. You can see I'm I'm dipping the um, the pens in the or pencils I guess I should say in the water and then coloring the outside of the floral lines. You should see a red arrow at the lower right hand section of your screen. I'd love it if you'd come and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I do a lot with Tim Holtz. Um, I do a lot with flowers. Um, like to use Altenew and um, you know again I do post post quite often and I tend to go towards the uh, the flowers and then of course grunge so how does that go together but it's fun so again I'm just kind of stamping and you can see the um, this added just kind of that background um, to that green ink schmoosh piece that then will go inside the vignette box so the next thing I'm doing is I picked up um, Picket Fence Distress Paint and I am painting the inside, kind of dabbing and then painting the inside and the outside of the box to kind of give it a uh, kind of a vintage, you know, old fashioned type look, distress look. So again, now I'm grabbing my collage medium and we'll go ahead and put that all on the bottom of the vignette box. And so then I'll add it to the corners of that watercolor piece too to make sure that the um, the edges get adhered down. And so I ended up putting it inside the box and then I stacked a bunch of acrylic blocks on top of it to hold it down while it was drying. It worked, it worked pretty well. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is do the lace. So this is from the Alterations Collection. So I ended up die cutting the lace pieces out of that ink schmoosh piece you see there. That's vintage photo on watercolor paper. And then I, I die cut them all and then I'm gonna go ahead and adhere them to the um, exterior of the, of the tray to just kind of give it a little bit of a, a feminine touch. I just kind of thought that would be cool with all of the flowers that I'm gonna use. So again, there's the there's the base box with the with the lace trim on it. 
And here are all those brush stroke flower minis. I didn't go through showing you how I die cut them again, um, you know, or how I put them together. I ended up gluing all the pieces together. And, um, you know, there's kind of my assortment of flowers that I'm going to use. Aren't they pretty? And this is the, uh, the sentiment, Create Your Life, that I use the Alphanumeric Emporium die for. So again, you can kind of see here, I debated, do I want to glue them like I did the flowers, or do I want to use um, Xyron and make them stickers? So I ended up going for the stickers. Um, I know Tim talks a lot about um, using, you know, putting the adhesive on the back of his die cuts, and I think I'm going to try that next time with the brushstroke flowers. I just didn't, um, didn't think about it until after I started. So you can see here, I'm using my bone folder to make sure that they are adhered well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull the, um, that, that plastic off. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use my um, pick here to attach all the letters. So again, you gotta make sure they're lined up pretty well because you have both insides and the exterior that you need to make sure are lined up. So again, we'll go ahead and put this all together and you might be able to see a little bit of shininess in there. That is actually the sticker paper that ends up hanging out there in the middle since they since these uh, letters have openings in them. So I ended up pulling out the craft pick again, and I'm just kind of pulling the um, the centers out. So here I'm gonna get the E's. I like these these letters. They kind of they have a vintage feel to them. You know, kind of like an old fashioned emporium. I thought that was just you know, such a cool name and such a, a, um, a fun set. I'm sure I'll be using this quite a bit in the future. So I ended up putting four layers so that again, I would get, um, you know, it would pop off the back of the box really, really well. So, so here's the box. So the next thing I did is I ended up pulling out the, um, the flowers and then I'm going to arrange them um, top left to bottom right, um, kind of in a sash of color. And then we'll go ahead and put the letters over it. So you can kind of see this is kind of what I have in mind. So I'm still kind of playing to make sure that, you know, that I get a lot of the, um, the flowers in here. So I'll go ahead and pull the, pull the letters out and put them off to the side. And I'm still kind of arranging, you know, adding a few extra. Kind of playing with the pick here to make sure that, you know, again, the leaves are underneath, <laughs> not on top. And uh, that I have a good, um, good selection of color and that it's kind of evened out pretty much as far as the color goes. So again, this is the time to kind of play with them and figure out what exactly you're doing. So the next thing I did is I grabbed a piece of press and seal. I'm sure you've seen other people use this. It's very handy when you have layers and layers um, of flowers or other, you know, other elements. So I went ahead and picked up all the flowers, turned them over on my craft sheet there, grabbed my um, collage medium, and then I'm kind of dabbing on the back of each one of the little leaves and the and the flowers. And you know, again, I know I'm going to have to do some, um, you know, some fixing after I flip it over. But again, I'm I'm just adding all of the glue to the die pieces right now. I'll pull my box back out, and then I'm going to go ahead and flip the um, press and seal with the flowers onto the box. And then we'll go ahead and make sure that each one is, is pressed down. And then I went ahead and used my, uh, my bone folder. I found it easier to just kind of press on the flowers and then pull the, uh, the press and seal up. I love this trick. Whoever, whoever came up with it's probably Jennifer McGuire. Um, <laughs> but again, it's a great trick. So again, I'm just kind of adding, you know, found a few, few holes, few openings that I wasn't happy with. So again, uh, just kind of adding additional, additional leaves, making sure that I've got good coverage and that it's wide enough uh, to display the letters properly. So again, just, just gluing, gluing and moving here. And so, like I say, I'll put that inspirational letters uh, quote on top of this. So there's the bottom with all the, all the pretty flowers. 
Next thing I'm doing is just gluing, um, gluing the letters here with the collage medium still. And they're not going to lay flat because I have a lot of um, layers here. You know, the flowers are popped up. So I had to really work to, um, you know, to get these lined up. But again, if I'm going to do a decor piece, I love to have, you know, inspirational quotes. And, uh, you know, Tim certainly um, has shared his his share of inspirational, inspirational quotes. So I just, you know, this will go down in my craft room. I'm kind of excited about putting it down there. So again, there's the your. And so then I'll go ahead and move on and do the, um, add the L-I-F-E for the Create Your Life sentiment. So again, just adding collage medium on there. And then I want it far enough above the lace that you can read the whole thing. So again, I'm having to kind of balance um, having enough spacing there and, uh, and getting it on there straight and even and all that good stuff. So. Just kind of still sticking, sticking the letters on here. And so after I finished with this, I went ahead and added the create, obviously. So I'm just kind of poking, poking and moving it and putting a little pressure on it. So there's the box so far. So here's the finished box. I hope you've enjoyed this. Again, I'm Terry with Terry's Mailbox. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Blogger. Would love to have you come and follow me on one of those. Have a great day.